guys, this is for another episode of Use It or Lose It. So um, I'm going to do, going forward, less bragging about what I'm getting rid of or have used up and more trying to give you ideas of how to use things up, maybe. So if you like to journal in like moleskin type notebooks, then you know that if you keep all the pages in the notebook, like you're gonna end up with one with a broken spine or one where you have to increase the spine and it kind of looks like that. So you have to take out like every other page. And what I do with those pages, which I did with this one, by the way, it's still too fat, so, and I have a couple more, I have to do that too. But anyway, um, I don't just throw the paper away, I use it for painting papers, and I also have paint that's like getting old and past it, and some of it is starting to smell bad, um, and or paint I don't really care for. Um, I don't care for its finish, I don't care for um, the way it works on the paper, some, there's something about it I don't care for. So I tend to try to just use them up um, and make painty papers out of them. This is some I did yesterday with some fluid acrylics that I had that were getting a little old and past it. Um, and so I painted them on a bunch of the old nose, moleskin pages. And then I also had some sticker paper from printing um, different stickers um, and they didn't quite print right. But it is, these are, this is full sheet label paper. I don't throw it away. Um, what I do then is save it. And then when I have to, or need to, or want to, I take it and do this same kind of thing with it, using up old paint and old um, supplies. And then I cut it up and I create stickers out of it, abstract stickers, um, square ones, and then also rectangular or washi tape style ones. So that's something else that I do. I've got a big pile of them down here. Hang on. So that's just all the latest batch. Um, I also wanted to die cut some birds and I'm remembering why I don't like the particular die cut of birds that I have because it's a pain in the neck to cut the birds out. Um, and one of the ones I have is a Tim Holtz. It's very particular, but I did use up a little bit of black drawing paper that I had laying around and I wasn't using, um, cutting out some little birds I can use for my journal pages. Anyway, I also had a number of small bottles of fluid acrylic and big bottles, and some of them were duplicates of the big bottles. So what I did was I took all these little bottles, combined them with some of the big bottles, and I was able to consolidate. I didn't really use it up, but I did consolidate the fluid acrylics to have them make more sense. So I took all of these and I either used them up, which was only like one or two of them, or I consolidated them into the bigger bottles. So I don't need to have big ones and little ones. I never take these traveling. The only reason for me to have small sample sizes of anything is if I'm gonna take it traveling. Otherwise, if I'm using it at home, I don't need a little bottle. And if I have the little bottle, I don't need a big bottle. I had the big bottle, so we're gonna use it. Anyway, you get the idea. So these are all going away. You know, I use these for drawing cheap and they work. Big crystal pen, I used one up. I used up a spool of thread. I used up some small, again, we're back to the small bottles of acrylic paint, right? And these were homemade, I think these were homemade fabric paints um, that we used up. I'm gonna show you how a good way to use those up in just a second, it's like right over there. So I used up, let's see, I think I, I think these were done with the medium that I don't like and I'm kind of scared of now, but yeah, anyway, here's another spool of thread. Here's another one. Uh, okay, and so when I'm doing the stickers and label paper and the background paper, I not only try to use up paints that are just sitting around, but also inks. You know, if you've got some of these acrylic inks, they don't last forever and they will like literally dry up in the jar and I've had a few do that. So if I have ones that are starting to get thick and past it, I will use them on the um, painty papers and the label paper, along with some of these pigment powders and they had some like glitter pigment powders. And that worked really well the last time I did a batch of labels. 
washi tape gets old and or some of it's just not <laughs> made very well. I talked about this in a vlog and these two particular ones like they're just going, sometimes it's not worth it to try to use it up. Sometimes you just need to let it go. This is two of those. I did use one roll up. An old jar of which I need to stop hoarding. I love to use old jars. This is a yogurt jar for paint water and mixing things. I don't need to keep a ton of them. So I've discovered as part of my art journey and um, my um, journey to only keep what I'm going to use and use or lose what I do have that I really need to and I'm the kind of person that needs to stick to a bin system. So I have one bin for say jars and when that bin is full I cannot keep any more jars unless I use up some of what's in the bin or get rid of some of what's, what's in the bin. For me that works really well. I know it doesn't work for everybody but for me that works really well. So yeah anyway this is needs to go. And it's glass, so it might be recyclable. I don't know. I used up a really old bottle of Dritz Freycheck. So if you do any kind of sewing or hand stitching, you just want to make sure the edges don't fray or the knots don't come undone. A little dab of this will do you. And you can get it at any fabric and craft store. Works great. I had this one bottle for a long time. I do have more. And this one was very dried. Um, and then an old plastic palette and a pipette. Okay, so these disposable pipettes, I have like a hundred of them. So plenty enough to throw them away. Do I feel bad about it because it's plastic? Yes. Would I buy them again? Probably not because it's really not something that's easily cleaned. And it's supposed to be disposable, but it's plastic. So yeah. And then I have a plastic paint palette. I don't like plastic paint palettes. They're, again, they're too hard to clean. So it's gonna go. Now, as far as the fabric paints, I had seven homemade containers of fabric paints. I'm pretty sure they were mixed from acrylic paint and Golden's GAC 900. I talked about this in a recent vlog. Um, it works really well, and I was really happy with the product I got using it. I didn't read the label before I bought it or after I bought it until recently when I saw somebody else talk about it. This product contains formaldehyde. Uh, you know, lots of what's in this art room has chemicals of some sort in it, but I'm not okay with formaldehyde. So now it's got to go away, but I don't know how to dispose of it. If anybody has any ideas, let me know. Anyway, I took a bunch of old canvas tags that I had in my stash. Some of them are from Michael's. Some of them are from Canvas Corp. Um when I was on their design team. So I'm like hand cut. And I took all of my fabric paints and I have these homemade ones and I also had some tulip paints. And I used a bunch of them up just creating these little abstract tags. Then I can slow stitch like a word on there or I could do a little drawing on there. I could attach it to a journal page. Um, I, have, I made some of these big ones, all different shapes. Some of these. Now I have taken some of these before and I created a banner for my art room out of them. Let me show you, hang on, that up there. And it's still, I made it before we moved uh, over three years ago. And when I moved, it was one of the first things I hung up. I really love it. And you definitely could take these banners that I've painted on and you could use them as the background for some of these. How cool would that be? I may sell some of these tags in the Etsy shop because I do now have a, a lot of them. But I am enjoying the process of using up what I'm not using by making painty papers, making stickers, making these fabric tags, and kind of pre-prepping some product parts um, that I can use for future works. Anyway, um, I know it wasn't rocket science and I know it wasn't anything new and unique and exciting. Um, but I do think it's something. And, you know, some of the other things you can do are these kind of tags. These are old clothing tags or playing cards. I have a lot of these around. You also, of course, can do paper clips. So if you aren't uh, a follower in the paper clip art 
group of which yes there is one I'll link it down below these are done I do these on wooden bases and then attach giant paper clips to the back I do big ones I do little ones and this has become a great way to use up fabric roses and just little bits and pieces that I have laying around. So I am exploring the idea of doing that more and more. And instead of buying stuff I don't need, using what I have and using it up. What about you? If you have ideas for using up things in your room that maybe are not getting enough attention or that you're just past it, but you want to let them go or use them up so you don't buy them again, Leave all those hints and tips down below. If you're in one of my Facebook art groups, put a post over there and tag me in it because I'd love some new ideas. Um, my daughter, I think it might be getting into some resin stuff. And I've told her, please don't buy any resin. Don't buy any molds. Don't buy any equipment. Just come take mine. <laughs> uh, so, you know, that's another way. If you have somebody in the family that, you know, likes to do a particular craft that you're just not doing anymore, but you've got all the stuff for it. Uh, adopted daughter Jenny likes to crochet, so I already told her, um, don't buy any yarn because I have a box. <laughs> and I've already given her a bunch of crochet hooks that I'm not using, so, you know, share the wealth with the family and friends. All right, that's it for the minute. I'd love to hear your take on it. <sighs> I hope you're having an okay summer. Ours has started off with a bang and the kids getting married again. <laughs> Long story, but anyway... It's going to be a busy a busy summer, I think, as per usual, and there's just a lot going on. So my video content will be probably inconsistent at best, but that's the best I can do right now because of personal issues. <sighs> Watch the vlog if you want details. Anyway, don't forget to check out the video description for relevant links, ways to support the free content, and maybe some free goodies for me every now and then. Uh, the Etsy shop is linked down below. The class I'm teaching with Bea Grob and all the other artists is down below. All that stuff. Check it out. Don't forget to stay safe, stay healthy, stay creative. Wear a mask if you need to and or think about getting a vaccine. Anyway, go out and do something nice for yourself because you do deserve it. I'll see you later. Bye, guys.